And this curve is all about indication of upper, upward rising supply curve. Indicates as price is rising, quantity they are willing to supply is rising. Now why the supply curve started from this level price? One. When price is one dollar, one, hey, he does have dollar. I'm not Taka. When they created this for God to change, it should be Taka, one Taka. So for one dollar, that's what they said, ten units are there willing to supply. If the price drops below one, they're not willing to supply any. Negative quantities would be supplied. In other words, they will not supply any. So as price rises from $1 to $5, they only went that far. It shows upward rising. Now, it didn't, did not say supply of what? For videos. Actually, you can measure any item whatsoever you want. You can say supply of books, supply of housing, supply of cars, not just video. You can also say supply of labor. At every wages, and that case we'll not call it price of resource. We'll call it labor wages. Because we workers earn wages. So per hour or whatever they are referring to. So when the wage is one dollar per hour, ten workers would be supplied. Is that's what they are saying. So that also has to do with demand and supply. Unfortunately, country like America, they do influence the market of labor at times. Low skilled workers in America earns a minimum wage. Do you guys have minimum wage in this country? 30, Government? 30,000 or 5,000. How much? 30, uh, no, 3,000 or 5,000 for gardeners workers. Oh. Yeah. Per hour? Is it per hour? Per month, 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 But to the really observe it, because a lot of the times it may be the minimum wage. In America there is something is very highly watched. But in country like India or Bangladesh, under the table they may pay a lot less than three to five thousand. And you can think of it, 3,000 or 5,000 rupees per month, or taka per month, uh, may not be the market wage. It actually possibly is a lot less than 3,000 taka per month. It includes also the allowance. But the reason they make it slightly higher than the market wage, because less than 3,000 per month will not be enough to survive. So you are applying some compassion to those who are working on a low skill jobs. Garment industry, I'm not sure. Does it require a lot of skills? No, you need no, to no. know how to operate the machine. Yes. 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 I don't know how to use that sewing machine. I bought yes. it 12 years ago and I still couldn't the unskilled workers will actually be, actually be trained in the club market. So oh, nothing is needed. Somebody who's going to come up to supervise is going to keep uh, When I bought the machine, I tried to get some training. It didn't really make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I failed. Because so I couldn't really figure out how to put the thread to that. It, 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 have, do you know how to sew by using a machine? See, just only one. That, so it is a hard job. But possibly those people are a lot more trainable than me. Actually, I took my son with me to the class. He learned it. He came home. <laughs> he was a bad teacher. He threatened me so many times to put the thread through that needle. I actually used to be confused. I can't see it well. So finally, he gave up. He was a teenager at the time. So, Mom, you can't even learn that. I never knew I could do that because it's such a difficult concept. Maybe I needed to have a better teacher than myself. <laughs> but the so skill is very, you know, minimum skill. It's not a difficult skill. I found it difficult because I'm not very inclined to those kind of activities. It doesn't come natural to me. But someday I'll get there. You know, it's only been 10, 12 years. In a couple more years, I will. How hard can it be? 
cannot be that bad, right? <laughs> so, given the level of training, that's the minimum main thing that should be offered. But in real world, if you don't have this government involvement, possibly they are supposed to make, may not sound that great, 1500 to 2000 taka per month. It's, it's, it's a very, very minimum level of uh, skill that is required to perform that job. But in 3,000 or 5,000 taka, can a family survive a month by buying groceries? No? How much do you it's difficult. Huh? It's very difficult. So possibly husband wife both will work. Yeah. And it's very in government sector nowadays. Husband wife and the children. They are focusing on the women. Children, children is like uh, 12 years, uh, they're getting, we have 13 babies. But isn't there, um, they don't child labor law in the country? Yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes.
when they went to United States and started selling. Because when they talked about market determination of rice, I never seen it. There wasn't any market determination of rice. It was determined by the government most of the time. So it was a learning process when you are in a very confined place, really don't see out of the box. You understand everything based on your experience. I may get boring. When I'm getting boring, stop me. So supply curve is upward rising, simply indicative of the, what they would like to do. This is not what is being supplied. Actual supply will be determined based on the demand curve in this picture. We don't have it here. So if you agree on this situation, there is no inherent tendency to change. Why? Because quantity demand would be equal to quantity supply at that particular market price. So graph-wise, does he have the picture somewhere? per unit, 30 units will be demanded and 30 units will be supplied. If you go price higher than $3 per unit, at price $4, take a look, quantity you demanded is 20, but quantity supplied is 40. So there will be unsold units, 40 minus 20. So if price is $4 up here, if you extend a straight line through 4 all the way, this is how much they are willing to supply, 40. And at price $4, they are willing to demand only 20. Mm -hmm. So unsold units should be there. The market forces will automatically bring it to Bring the them down over time. You have to give them time. So market doesn't know what the actual market clearing price is. So it will go through those up and down process. And eventually they will hit the price $3. In real world, price is not as simple as that. The real world price could be $2.85. We use nicer numbers because it's easy to understand. But in real world, when price is $2.85, it's not that easy to hit that price. You have to give it enough time to hit that equilibrium price. Now, is that equilibrium written on stone forever? No. It will change over time based on changes in the market. So this is true for this time frame. During this time frame, time frame one, whatever we want to call it, when price is three dollars, quantity demanded is thirty, quantity supplied is thirty. But if the price is below three dollars, two dollars means huge quantity is being demanded, not enough supply. So we are having a shortage. So definition of surplus and shortage. How do you define it? A lot of the times my students would write, when we have shortage, demand is greater than supply. Actually, that's wrong. When we have shortage, we have greater quantity demanded. QD is greater than QS. It's a quantity demanded that is being greater than what is supply. When you say demand greater than supply, we're referring to the entire demand curve, entire supply curve. So you have to pinpoint, no, it's not always demand greater than supply. It's a quantity demand is greater than quantity supply. I don't know why it is hard for a lot of students to grasp. Because they think demand and quantity demand is same. No, it's not. Demand has two parts. Various prices, various units being demanded. When we talk about demand, remember the table for demand here. They had various prices. At that price, how many units they wanted to demand. So demand is combination of both of them. So you have to see at that price, that quantity demand. See the difference? Make sense? Make sense? So 
so the definitions are crucial. So shortages and supply six, quantity demand and exceeds money. So it's not demand greater than supply. In multiple choice type question, if I use any, look for those words. QD greater than QS. Surplus means market price, market clearing price is should be much higher. And if we have a huge surplus, we must be charging too high a price, price must be. So market is telling us that we are not at the equilibrium. By looking at surplus and shortage, we can figure out. And actually, in a, where do we see this price determination taking place? Do you know where? Agricultural product. Huge quantity they are willing to supply. If you ever go to those kind of markets, hot, everybody is selling same vegetable. You notice most of them are charging exact same price. Why? Because if one of them wants to charge higher than the rest, nobody will buy from him. That's where we get to see the free market at work. In other cases, market has so many regulations we really don't get to see. Best place to watch it, actually I tell my students to go to, uh, we do have, we call it farmer's market. In America, during summer months, local uh, farmers will bring their excess production and they will sell it and you get fresh products, organic products made without any you know, fertilizer or anything. It's like growing in your back, own backyard. And I don't have a green thumb. I try to grow a lot of things in my backyard. One thing I would like to share, I try to grow okra, which is called limb spin, tarish. I had only one, and it was rising like this. So I was waiting, because when the fruits are right, it will actually fall down, right? So I was waiting when the carrot will fall down. <laughs> but it was not. Finally, somebody told me, why, what are you waiting for? I said, it's not right yet. It's not like that. It is never going to fall down. That was my only attempt to grow carrot. <laughs> never went back to that. I said, oh my God. So I have no clue. I rather try tomatoes, they go for, you have to use some fertilizer, I do use it. Because I'm not that great in farming, so we'll have so many tomatoes. This year I didn't do it because I'm coming here. I have tomato and green peppers. That's Kachamorich to Vishwanipo. Odeshe is hardly, which is the Ajivaji Kachamorich, you like them, vegetable motorana. ঠিকুলো <laughs> <laughs> At the tissue need food to the <laughs> What the heck are you doing? He said, you want those katamorich? You have to do that. I said, okay. Learn every day. So by doing that, started to have lots of katamorich. Pollination. Because inside the house, we don't have any yeah. insects to do the pollination. Yeah, you have to do that. Otherwise, you're not getting enough. That's where you see the true market in action. Factors that will shift the demand curve. Consumer income, some of you said that. Here, I'll stop and identify two kinds of products. Normal products for which when price goes up, you want more of it. Most products in this world are of normal types, normal products. Anything out there, not that you're starving today, you want to have in America, most people understand steaks. You want more steaks, not that you're not eating steaks now, but 
This is something when your income goes up, you want to have more stakes. Instead of having a stake one ninth per week, you'll have four ninths per week. But nowadays they are more, a lot more health conscious. It's not working very well. We have to use some other example. So not that we are starving or anything, but as soon as you graduate and have a job, you want to buy more of the things. You will have your own household, you will set up, you will buy all the furniture, utensils, you will be cooking your own meals, no longer going back to your home for your mother's home cooked meal. You have to be yourself on your own. So you demand more of it. And as soon as you lose your job, or in America, the example I use, suppose you work for a couple of years and then you want to go back to school for MBA. Most of them normally goes for MBA at night. And that way it takes a long time to get the degree. But if you want to get the degree quick, I know a lot of people, they will give up their job, go to school full time, in a year and a half, they will have their MBA. So that way, yes, you are sacrificing your income for a year and a half. You will get a lot more higher income as a result after you graduate. So, as soon as your income drops, very low becomes very low, you are living off your saved income, you will be buying not four stakes per week, possibly one stake per week or whatever, something like that. So, here, change in consumer income will give you two kinds of product. Normal goods and inferior goods. He did talk about those later on. Did you notice that? But this is where it comes. For normal goods, demand curve will shift to the right. Increase. As your income increases, your demand increases. So anytime any curve shifting to the right means it's indicating increase in the product. Whatever product that is. But inferior goods, when your income drops, the demand for those products drops, goes to the left. So any demand curve shifting to the left indicates you are actually demanding less of it. You would like to have more, but given your budget, you can no longer buy four stakes per week. Population, does it go up? Of course, all the time it does go up. In Western world, on the other hand, they go at a very, very slow rate. What about Bangladesh? What is your population growth rate per year? Any clue? No? Nobody ever looked? Okay, I'm not giving you permission to look it up. Are you looking it up now? No, I'm not. I don't like use of cell phones during the lecture. But I'm sorry to take your pictures. My picture without asking me? No, just the classroom. I'm attending a class for a long time. <laughs> okay. I should then take pictures of them. Yeah, that's right. And maybe you like one of them. <laughs> Mom, they're all my juniors. So what? What's the age got to do with it? <laughs> Have a chart. Shakespeare married someone who was eight years older than him. What about Mohammed? His wife Khadija was older than him. It has nothing, it's a mere, just a number. Right. <laughs> 1.34% <laughs> per thousand per year? No, no, no. Percentage. Percentage. That's very high rate. Possibly India has higher rate than this. India has a serious problem about population growth. It is getting out of control. I have only one, but that's because I had a full-time job. I couldn't afford to have another child because I didn't like the idea of letting the kid go to the daycare and stuff like that. But, but they are developing rapidly. Then, because of their education. Yeah, they are efficient, but most households that chooses to have their wife having a job would choose to have less number of kids. And most of them goes to work. Actually, in America, women are joining labor force more than, much higher rate than uh, male workforce. 
Males in America are doing poorly in terms of jobs. During the last Great Recession in late 2008-9-10, more and more women got better jobs, very high profile jobs. And more and more men lost their jobs during that recession. So they are staying home because women are better than men. <laughs> Actually, when women are focused to have a career, they're a lot more ruthless than men. Men take it for granted in America. So women want to prove themselves. If I have the job, they'll be extraordinarily effective than me. So that is why I think. And possibly nowadays people are a lot more liberated. So I see cases where men are staying home, taking care of the household. They are pretty good at that. And they are pretty good cook. So they are running the household. Actually, 30 years ago they made a movie called Mr. Mom. Back then people used to make fun of that movie Mr. Mom. But today it's so true in America. More and more women are going for a job and their husbands are still home. There's nothing wrong in it. If women can stay home and take care of them, they're really lousy at running the household. They spend too much. If men are running the household, they are a lot more down to earth. Spending wise, they will not overspend like women. Women goes by the emotions when they go for shopping. Did you notice all the women in the class, they are so excited about shopping. Yeah. Men are not. So they are really better off if they make those decisions. And it's working for a lot of families. I don't know if that happens to my son. Possibly I'll change my mind. I'll not be so open at the time. <laughs> I think my son would love to be the house husband. I don't think I like it. <laughs> I'm more open theoretically. In real life, it would be hard for me. Sorry. I don't have a daughter. If I did, I would be speaking from the other side of the screen. Anyway, population is increasing. For most countries, as population increased, demand would increase. Ten years ago, I was telling everyone, I came to this town, this city, ten, I think I possibly came in 2002. My in-laws are originally from Chattanooga, but they were in India while the partition took place. My mother-in-law was studying in school. She was uh, staying in a hostel. Back in time, a lot of people used to send their children.